methodically, unapologetically. The nation's leader has made room in his diary for us. Please show him due respect, unless, of course, you work for the Australian, Mr Kevin Rudd. Suffice to say, our common currency is the currency of words. Do I love words? Yes, I do. <laughs> do I love the sound of my voice saying those words? Absolutely. <laughs> but sometimes, ladies and gentlemen, words are not enough. And to take you to the maximum level of Kevin's inspiration tonight, I'm going to use not just words, but music. <laughs> music, please. <laughs> Rudd is in the air. Every sight and every sound. Rudd is in the air. And my stimulus abounds. And let me say this, am I your most popular leader? Yes, I am. Am I clever and handsome and wise? Absolutely. I have something that you must believe in. And it's there when you look in my eyes. Rod is in the air, like emissions on the breeze. <laughs> Rod is in the air. When I'm flying overseas. <laughs> Sometimes it must have been my dreaming. But I'm real and you're glad that I came. I have something that you must believe in. And it's there when you call out my name. Hi, my name's Terry Bergen. Welcome to The Entertainers. Welcome to Real Time. Today I am sitting speaking with Anthony Aykroyd. G'day mate. Terry, it's an absolute pleasure. Mate, always a pleasure <laughs> with you. In fact, let me, let me take our audience back 12 months. Um, Let's do that. Yeah. <laughs> Anthony <laughs> was actually, dissolved uh, 12 uh, months Anthony, ago. <laughs> <laughs> Anthony was the first person that we interviewed. Yeah. Now, you were just beginning then, weren't we you, were, Terry? We had, we, we had a Handycam, and uh, we were actually using the sound from the Handycam, and the Handycam was four years old, mm -hmm. so we have a lot to thank this man for, for enduring not one, but two of those. That's right. Yeah. I was the guinea pig. You were. Terry thought, let's shoot it on a Handycam in a really noisy cafe. Absolutely, exactly. He's and learned a lot. <laughs> just the, just the fresh. He, Mate, he means well. Really, really, I do, I do, I do, I do. Mate, let's get into it. Yes, so, please. So, um, for our people out there, mm -hmm. who is Anthony Aykroyd, where's yes. he been, and where's he going? Okay, uh, well, Anthony Aykroyd uh, began his professional career as a stand-up comic. It was 1982, Terry. Uh, the Sydney Comedy Store. Now, I don't know if any of your viewers ever attended the Sydney Comedy Store in the 1980s. But it was a pretty aggressive environment, and uh, I actually remember ringing my mother up in Hobart, who's a lovely woman, and I, I said to Mum, uh, Mum, I really want to try stand-up comedy, but I'm scared, you know, I'm frightened, it's a really aggressive environment, and I know she was trying to be helpful when she said, oh, go on dear, give it a try, no one's going to laugh at you. <laughs> How right she was. That particular night, but it did get better. So I, you know, started doing more comedy in live situations. Started to do TV. Did a lot of Hey Hey It's Saturdays, if um, some of your viewers may remember, uh, and midday shows. And then I got onto an ABC show called The Big Gig, which went for three years from '89 to '91, and that kind of took me up to the uh, the next level of that. Uh, so I've done comedy in, in live situations, I've done TV, I've done radio, I've done a radio show called Thank God It's Friday on ABC Radio now for 16 years. 
uh, Current Events Radio. And so in terms of comedy, my latest bizarre kind of departure was uh, came out of a resemblance people think I have to a certain Australian Prime Minister, our current Australian Prime Minister, who used to be a Prime Minister and now is a Prime Minister again. His name is Kevin Rudd. Maybe we'll talk to him later. I believe he's coming over for a coffee. He's, he's going to come over. Fantastic. He wants to meet you. Great. Yeah, yeah. he's heard about your filming expertise. Oh, I hope he doesn't know I'm a Julia fan. <laughs> we won't mention <laughs> no. that. Uh, but also, and this is something I'd really like to talk about, um, I've investigated humour and laughter and how humour and laughter can help people in various situations. So I've run courses for now for two decades uh, teaching businesses and people in businesses how to use humour, laughter, play, positive energy to their advantage in different ways in communication, in creativity, in terms of stress reduction, uh, in terms of motivation and inspiration and just enjoying your work. What a concept that you can be happily successful rather than stressed out successful. So my new workshop is called Stress Less, Laugh More. Uh, and when I came up with that title it really just tickled people's imagination and, and, and really gripped them. I think it was kind of, there's a problem there and a solution, which is the problem is stress and the solution is, is laughter. Mm. And uh, so I've run that as a public workshop now, which is sold out each, each time I've done it. Uh, the first one sold out three times uh, the number of places we had, and I've started to do that now in the corporate arena as well, and people ab absolutely love it. It's really transformational and it's a lot of fun. Fantastic. Mm. So when a corporate out there is looking at you to... Mm -hmm. I can see them looking right now. Put you in an event. Mm. Look at that guy. Oh, wow. Does he need to go to that stress? He's stressed out. He needs, he needs me. You need, you need this guy <laughs> now. In fact, all you guys do. So, Please so, go on, Terry. Okay. Yes. So, so when a corporate is looking at you yeah, to, yeah. to mm -hmm. engage you for an event, mm -hmm. what kind of things can you help them with? Well, really, it's, it's coming in. I work with people individually, so I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. And I also work with teams, I work with departments, and I work with whole companies. And it's looking at ways of using humour, laughter, and the, this, this, this energy of positivity to affect all aspects of the work environment, both on an individual basis and also in a, in a group sense. And so some of the results I'm getting is, is you know, better communication within a department. I've had people... Uh, in, in a department divided into two groups who hated each other and um, after the workshop they went out to dinner together yeah. for the first time because once you start laughing, once you start seeing that um, humorous side to people, you see their humanity as well and you say, oh, just a person like me. Mm. You know, I've helped people with their communication on an individual level, I've helped a CEO who um, was actually a lovely guy but he just, you know, people didn't like him mm. because he wasn't expressing that side of his personality because he felt uncomfortable doing it. And really my big message is that you can deliberately and consciously uh, develop your sense of humour. People say to me, well, you can't teach people to have a better sense of humour. That is wrong. You can, because I've done it with thousands of people. And to me, that's like saying, well, you can't teach someone to have a better aerobic capacity or you can't teach someone to touch type. It's a yeah. set of skills, and once you learn those skills, you will develop your own unique sense of humour. And that's on a big scale. Some people are extroverted and right out there and loud and noisy, and other people are very introverted, but everyone has their own unique sense of humour. I call it their humour fingerprint. Okay. And once you're able to discover your own humour fingerprint and how to express that, you become very good at tuning in to the hu humour fingerprints of other people. So your communication is really enhanced and uh, and the, the research is out there that people with a good sense of humour, for a start they make more money. Um, there was a researcher called Fabio Sala who did a, um, uh, an extensive study and he found that the executives who were making the most money and also had the most respect in terms of their peers were the people who were able to create humour and laughter with other people. Mm. Uh, people with humour skills are regarded as more charismatic, more trustworthy. Hum oh, the dog's talking oh. to us. <laughs> the, dog is, the dog is agreeing with us. <laughs> 
<laughs> Shall we continue? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> or shall I put him somewhere? <laughs> no, let's go. All right, okay. Uh, as I was saying before I was interrupted by my Chinese crested powder puff. <laughs> That's the breed of dog that <laughs> dog is. I don't know if he's on camera. But, um, can, we anyway. get, can we get a shot at the dog? Can we get a, <laughs> we'll get a cutaway shot? Okay, yeah. She's gone. We'll, we'll he's a, gone. We'll get a cutaway. He was a she. Yeah. said, hey, babe, take a walk on the <laughs> side. Let's do it. So as I was saying, Terry, um, humour humor skills are learnable, and once you learn them, uh, there are all sorts of benefits. And the research shows you're regarded as more uh, charismatic. Productive. Productive. Yeah. You're regarded as more trustworthy. You have better people skills. And um, Daniel Goleman, who uh, coined the, the phrase emotional intelligence, has done a lot of research on humour, and he finds that executives with well-developed uh, senses of humour uh, that development correlates with a whole bunch of other skills. So when you develop your sense of humour, you also develop your, your empathy, uh, your intelligence, your communication, your creativity. So it's not just about the humour, it feeds into all aspects of work. And really the results I've seen in the workshops, for some people, is absolutely transformational. And it can really trans transform a department or, or a team and take them to the next level or repair um, conflicts they have within that team. Mm. Uh, so it's, it's quite miraculous in some ways. So do you think that event coordinators, uh, managers, uh, CEOs mm -hmm. have a propensity to go towards the, uh, I guess, tradition, more traditional mm -hmm. keynotes and uh, workshops such as leadership mm -hmm. and resilience, etc., rather than looking at something uh, like uh, humour or comedy uh, to bring more productivity and, uh, yeah. I guess, more well balance in the workplace? Well, I think there has been that bias. Uh, there's been a bias towards the, you know, quote-unquote serious, mm. um, and people are more comfortable in, you know, time management, goal setting, and all of that's absolutely mm. essential. Yeah. But what's happening now, there's a bit of a humour revolution happening, that's what I'm finding. I've been doing this for 20 years, and it's just starting to really accelerate now as people become aware that there's so much benefit in, uh, in, in humour and laughter. And, and we're talking, you know, hard... Uh, hard evidence, research-based evidence that mm. shows that um, introducing these skills into a workplace can have this this whole range of of benefits that are very pra very very practical, you know, in terms of profit and productivity, uh, not just you know kind of intangible benefits like feeling better, um, but it's wonderful to feel better, and that feeling better leads to these other more concrete uh, outcomes. That's great information. I mean, particularly for people knowing that they can hire someone to make them laugh mm -hmm. rather than make them cry in some areas. <laughs> because, That's right. You know, often it, that leadership and resilience stuff is like, oh my God, is that is that mm. really what I'm like? Mm. Look, um, that comes in keynote, workshop. Yep. You're also able to MC while you workshop. Oh, yeah, and, yeah. Uh, so you're very, uh, I guess, uh, malleable. Almost like I'm, a piece of clay. You're I'm a malleable. talented guy. <laughs> I am a malleable piece of clay. There you go. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, well, you know, I've, I've always worked as a comedian. Yeah. Uh, either doing straight stand-up or in my other guise as, as Kevin Rudd. Um, but I've, I've also done a lot of emceeing, and I've done a lot of emceeing overseas. You know, I was in Buenos Aires last year and Singapore before that. So I love to emcee, I love to do the straight comedy, and uh, I love to be Kevin. We might see him in a minute. Yes, He's yes. Going. I think I heard his limousine pulling up. Um, oh, there's a knock on the door. That might be him now. We'll, we'll get him in a second. Okay. Um, so, yes, the, the comedy is wonderful, the emceeing is fantastic, and these workshops uh, are, are really marvellous, and they have a, a direct impact on the bottom line of any company, as well as having people have a lot of fun. Yeah. You can combine having a lot of fun with making money. If you want to get in touch with Anthony, jump onto the website and we'll put you in direct contact with him. See if he's suitable for your next event. Now, where's Kay Rudd? Okay. I mean, I've never waited for a Prime Minister before. Where the heck is he? Oh, Terry! Oh, Prime Minister. How are you? How are you? Please take a seat. Thank you very much, Mr. <laughs> Rudd. Oh, camera. <laughs> you like the camera? I'm sorry, Terry. Oh, I forgot you were here. I'm sorry. Okay. Um, how can I help? I'm Kevin, and I'm here to help. <laughs> I can't believe I'm sitting here talking to the Prime Minister of Australia. Yes, um, I am the Prime Minister of Australia. Is it all? I am the Prime Minister of Australia. 
I just like saying that. Because <laughs> I was and then I wasn't and now I am again. I think that's important. And how does that feel? It feels, if I can describe it quite simply, uh, as a state of incredible rapture, ecstasy, uh, self-vindication and just a really cooking with gas good time. Wow. And uh, you just slip straight back into the role without a problem? Uh, Terry, I uh, am a natural leader. I lead in all things and I'm not saying I haven't been through some difficult times. But you know something? You get through them. Uh, when I was, shall we say, displaced as Prime Minister, I took myself off to uh, one of my favourite haunts in New York called Scores Nightclub. And you know, the dancers there really taught me an important lesson. <laughs> Poles do matter. <laughs> in fact, I was thrown out that night for unveiling my stimulus package. Do go on, Terry. I'm just wondering, have you spoken to Julia? Julia? Julia. Julia. I'm not sure I recognise the name. Okay. Um, mm. Gillard. Oh, Julia Gillard, who used to, before I was. Um, <laughs> yeah. before Listen, you. I fully support Julia. Uh, there'll be no white anting from 1K Rudd. And let me take this opportunity, if I may, Terry, to speak directly to Julia and to say, Julia, I wish you all the very best. And I hope one day to, uh, to maybe have a conversation with you in your new workplace. And then I'll say something like, yes, Julia, I will have fries with that. Oh, that's a little bit cruel, Prime Minister, don't you think? I'm sorry, Terry? I thought that uh, was a little cruel. Sorry, I forgot you were there again. Okay, no problem. So the camera loves you, I've noticed. The camera loves me, the people love me. You love me, I can see it in your eyes. The inanimate objects we are surrounded by love me. I attract love. I don't know why. Perhaps it's just because I'm so lovable. But I've also always had a great sense of humour. And people enjoy the old Rodster jokes. Would you like to hear one of my jokes? I'd love to hear a Rodster joke. <clears throat> knock, knock. Who's there? Abbott. Abbott who? I bet there's a pair of socks down those budgie smugglers. <laughs> oh, very good. Talk about a hung parliament. Oh dear. Oh dear. And that's it? Yes. Okay. That's we... it. You wanted more? Well, I thought you might have a few more jokes than that, but that's okay. So right. let's move on. Prime Minister, you've been getting around the traps for quite some time now. Mm hmm. Um, and. The traps, that's hip talk, kids. <laughs> that's right. Uh, you, you may have some uh, Australianisms to throw at that. Um, you know, you, you, you like to speak at conferences? I do like to speak at corporate events. I come along, and let me say this, Terry. I not only deliver some pretty hilarious comedy, I also sing, I also dance, and I elevate everyone in that room with the power I call Kevin-spiration. Oh, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. And people out there who want to um, hire you, mm -hmm. your Royal Highness, to an event, do we call you a Royal Highness? Is well, I think there has been a birth of a royal baby, but um, okay. I like the way you think. Your Eminence, yes. perhaps. Um, your Excellency. Your Excellency, thank yes. you. Um, so if they wanted to hire you, they could hire mm -hmm. you for a spot? Yes, I come along and I deliver uh, my entertainment. Okay. Sometimes people want what I call an appearance which is about a 10 minute spot in which I entertain. That's great for opening nights mm -hmm. and um, for those special occasions when it's just the short form. And then I have my full length show, which is all bells and whistles, all singing, all dancing, slides, entertainment, and we're looking at about a 25 minute show of absolute enthrallment entertainment and hilarity. Okay, mm -hmm. and can the event coordinators out there in conference land, mm -hmm. corporates, hire you as, hire the Prime Minister as mm -hmm. an MC? Yes, I have recently started MCing because really you cannot get enough, Kevin. So to have me coming out, making my jokes, keeping the night, pumping along, people absolutely love it. Okay. Prime Minister, I just want to thank you for 
coming along here and talking with the entertainers today. I'm sure you've got um, a lot of important stuff to do mm -hmm. with regards to passing uh, legislation through through the house. And uh, I am busy. You're a bit, bit busy man, so we do appreciate mm -hmm. you coming here today. Is there anything you'd like to say to our audience uh, before we leave? Well, perhaps I will leave, Terry, the people with this wonderful story that was told to me by my mentor, Master Chow, who gave me my love of the Mandarin language. It's a wonderful story, which I think is very funny, but has a moral at the end. <clears throat> I love that. Lost in translation, perhaps? Terry, you're still here. <laughs> Thank you very much, Prime Minister, for being with us today. This has been Terry Bergen for The Entertainers and Real Time, speaking with Mr. Rudd, the Prime Minister, and also Anthony Aykroyd in disguise. Oh, was he here? He He's was. He's very good. He was. Anyway, we'll see you later, and uh, I'm sure you want to book this guy as soon as possible. Bye. I was in my head for waking up like